Today's session is Foolproof Preparation of a Digital Print Job. It is my pleasure to introduce our speakers for today, Veronica Carlson, Senior Product Marketing Manager, Ling Wong, Product Line Manager, and our special guest, Judd Plattenberg, President of Organ Printing Communications. So without further delay, let's start our presentation. Veronica, please take it away. Thank you, Yael. Good day, everyone. The upcoming hour is filled with effective solutions you can start putting into practice today to save time and overcome the most common challenges in Make Ready. So here's the agenda for today's session. We will start with defining what Make Ready is in a digital printing environment. Make Ready is the term we're going to use moving forward when we refer to job preparation since Make Ready is more specific to the production printing process and encompass a wider range of tasks to get to an errorless production stage. In this session, we are going to define it and give a framework to it. After that, we pick Judd Plattenberg, the voice of one experienced printer who we think represents many of you in the audience, to share his knowledge on why your time spent in this webinar will really pay off. Ling will take you through the five typical challenges found in Make Ready, which you can overcome by educating your print buyers to simplify design and delegate color management and Make Ready decisions to the latest stage possible for more efficiency. And last, as a great takeaway, we'll, give, uh, we'll have many great free resources to help you educate your staff, communicate with your customers, and implement those solutions uh, right away. So, let's start with what is Make Ready. The Make Ready term came from the offset world, and it refers to everything done on the press to prepare for the final print job. This includes selecting the proper colors, getting the image placement correct, setting up the plates, and preparing the printer for the chosen paper size and paper weight. Getting everything right during Make Ready helps to ensure a quality print run. In digital printing, the Make Ready process starts with engine setup, and this is a quick process, and an experienced operator can do it in five minutes. Now, uh, the Make Ready also refers to job preparation, because files are processed digitally, color management and finishing settings happen at the rip. So job preparation can become a bit more complex for digital printing, and it can sometimes take hours depending on the job and finishing requirements. In this webinar, we are going to concentrate on the job preparation part of Make Ready. This two-part webinar focuses on um, streamlining Make Ready, and there are two ways in our mind to prevent inefficiencies in Make Ready. Upstream is one. And for that, we need to educate customers to deliver print-ready files that are optimized for digital printing and delegate color management and layout decisions to the print operator. This will be covered in part one today. Then the downstream is the other way to prevent inefficiencies. Once we get a print-ready file, the technology in digital printing evolved to offer many tools to identify and troubleshoot file errors correct them, and simplify job preparation. This is covered in part two on September 25th. So let's get started. Next, we want to stress the importance of having an efficient make ready process. And what a better way to communicate that to you than having an experienced printer, having one of you in the audience telling us why we should care about make ready. We want to introduce you to Chad Plattenberg, President of Oregon Printing Communications. We met Chad at the conference hosted by Cody. Cody is an industry association that promotes digital printing in the U.S. And Chad came to us to get to know the latest and greatest technologies at the conference. And since then, we got to know how passionate he is around Make Ready and his strong desire to improve and achieve automation in his print shop. And it is a desire we know many of you in the audience share with Chad. Chad, welcome to the webinar. Um, please, uh, tell us about the business you are running so the audience have a quick overview of uh, this type of business. Okay, hello, Veronica. 
Um, Oregon Printing is headquartered in Dayton, Ohio. We were founded in 1976, and Oregon began as just an offset print shop. And we've grown over time to offer digital printing, creative direction, direct marketing, and mailing services. Oregon recently, we've recently found ourselves um, developing and executing many successful fundraising campaigns for university alumni associations, for nonprofits, and arts associations. Thanks, Chad. So here's our first question to you. Can you tell us why you are so passionate about Make Ready? Well, after all these years, I've learned that in today's digital workflow, time spent preparing jobs for print is basically money in the trash. But spending my time improving the process of getting, getting the jobs to print pays off since the cost of time spent fixing customer files is high and our print engines can sit idle just waiting for the job to be ready. And that's a high risk to take. The real opportunity here lays in keeping our print engines running. Automating the process of getting the files from our customers' hands or in some cases our creative department to the print queue is critical. Not only do properly prepared files save time and money, but they, they help eliminate mistakes. When we have to open, fix a file that is not properly prepared, the whole process can just get thrown out of sync, which means time and money. And we really like to avoid that whenever possible. Certainly. And when that happens, Jack, what is the business impact of inefficiencies in MegReady? Well, Veronica, we run a PDF workflow, which is pretty common today. When we get properly prepared PDFs, things go very smoothly, whether they're going to offset or digital printing. But when we get files that are not prepared properly, well, this is where the inefficiencies in the workflow start. One of our technicians generally has to stop what he is doing, jump in, and they either have to request a new PDF or sometimes in the worst case scenario, they might need to get a hold of the native files, which means loading fonts, finding graphics, and then remaking the PDF properly. This costs time and money. And at this point in the job's life, the money is just not there. By the time you get back into the flow of work, you've lost valuable production time. The problem is somebody has to eat the cost and the time, and too many times it's the printer. Printers eat the cost of job bad pre preparation. In the end, we can lose customers also due to late delivery of the product. I'll give you an example. We had a job last week from a local university, and of course it was pre-quoted first. So when one of our techs ran it through the workflow, it aired out, and he spent two to three hours talking to the customer, walking them through the fix. That meant a couple hour, hundred dollars of time and, and the digital press still wasn't running. If you do the math real quick, just by having jobs like that come in once a week, our operation would be losing more than 10,000 bucks a year. Yeah, so, that is something to watch out for. Yes, so, it is. Yeah, so how is your business equipped to resolve pre-press and make ready issues? Well, we do a couple of things, Veronica. First, whenever we can communicate with the customer on how we require files and why we require them prepared that way, we do that. One of the ways we've done this, one of the things we've done to make this happen effectively is we've created a checklist on our website with all the things designers need to consider when making a PDF. This checklist has really helped us and our customers a lot. Um, another thing, we prefer to do the imposition ourselves through Fiery Impose because we know how we want to run it. Our first tool that we use when there's a problem is Pit Stop, which comes with Impose and can fix a lot of simple problems if the file was built right to begin with. Many times we'll request the customer fix the file and send a new PDF. But in the worst case scenario, we end up trying to locate native files and fix the problem and redistill a new PDF. You know, it's also important for us to attend events such as Podi's App Forum and webinars like this so we can get to know the latest and greatest best practices and solutions around Make Ready technology. Make Ready. Technology really moves fast. Webinars like this really help us get up to speed. Indeed. And that is what we will be doing right here, right now. So, uh, Jeff, thanks so much for setting up the stage for this webinar. So Link can start uh, presenting how to overcome the five most common challenges in Make Ready. Link, you now can take it away. Well, thank you, Meryl. Hi, everyone. Um, you probably all know from your experience 
that there can be a number of reasons why a customer file may not be print ready when it arrives at your print shop. Well, we pulled the most commonly seen issues and categorized them into five areas for this presentation. And they are, number one, getting PDF file. Number two, gang up layout issues. Number three, booklet design issues. Number four, design doesn't consider inline finishing. And number five, hat printing issues. With each area, we will look at examples of incorrect settings and files, and also what settings you can recommend to your customers so that your customers can help avoid these issues at design time and will not cause unnecessary delay at production time. Well, we will cover a lot of content in this presentation. And don't sweat if you cannot write down all the tips and references uh, we put on the slides. As part of this webinar re uh, re registration, uh, you will receive the webinar's recording and all the references in a thank you email afterwards. So let's begin. Source file from customers is our challenge number one. To produce jobs from files from a large variety of applications really pose problems, um, such as incompatible versions, required forms not available, or missing embedded graphics. And these problems slow down the pre-press and production for your customer orders, and often it requires um, your print shop to go back to customers to get all the missing elements. The preferred format for customer file is PDF. There are a number of benefits can be gained from getting PDF files directly from your customers. One, while well, your customers can prove the file before handing over to production. PDF files have all the required resources, such as images and fonts, already embedded, therefore eliminating the risk of missing elements. Next, you don't need to install applications in all their different versions to consume various customer file formats, therefore eliminating any IT overhead of maintaining additional applications. Next benefit is while the native files stay with your customers, you still have the flexibility of performing late stage edits on PDFs with tools like the uh, Adobe Acrobat and Focus Pistop like um, Judge just mentioned. And for Fiery customers, these tools are already included for Fiery Impose, Compose, and Jotmaster. Well, with the file format settled, let's look at the requirements for PDF creation. We often see two kinds of issues associated with PDF creation, wrong color settings and wrong spot color settings. Color settings are important in the PDF creation. The image here shows the incorrect distiller setting for PDF export in InDesign. This is not recommended because colors are converted to a particular color space. In, in this case, sRGB, the color gamut of, um, of the elements in the document may get reduced and result in less vibrant colors. You should advise designers not to convert colors when creating PDF files and leaving all the colors in its native format and have them embedded with the original source file. To do this, the correct settings are no color conversion for color conversion and include all profiles for profile inclusion policy. In many traditional printing workflows, Designers would convert spot color to process. When all spot to process is checked in InDesign's um, ink manager, as we show here, a spot color is saved as CMYK values, but the PDF file will not include a spot color name and spot color tags. In the digital, digital printing workflow, you want to take advantage of the spot color library and Pantone color matching capabilities available for your digital press. If your, if your print shop has spot color management tools, such as um, Fiery Spot On, you want to preserve the spot color name and tags in the PDF files so that you can produce optimum color in the printed piece. 
So to achieve the best spot color, leave all spot suppressors unchecked in the uh, InDesign's Ink Manager. To summarize, to get good PDF from your customers, and do not convert colors when creating PDF files. So to make things easy for your customers, we have created um, something called Fiery Optimized 2 Distiller Settings that you can download from EFI.com and share with your customers. The designers can then install these settings in, um, say, Adobe Acrobat Distiller with a very just a simple drag and drop action. Another great resource is um, this World of Fiery webinar recording we did last year called Best Practices for Preparing Files for Digital Print. The webinar also offers a very nice uh, pocketbook called ABCs of Design <laughs> for Digital Printing Guide. These are really great resources you can point your customers to on how to create high quality design that is optimized for Fiery driven printers. But don't worry if you can't jot down the long names um, in the checklist. We will provide you with all the, uh, the references and their download locations in the thank you email after this webinar. Our challenge number two covers issues related to gang up imposition layout. Here's a little animation that actually captures the scenario Judd was um, just illustrating earlier. The designer has the best intention, but wasted time designing layout that should have been done at pre-press time. When the operator gets the print order, the order is not ready for printing. And he has to send the job back to the designer for rework. This is a very inefficient process, and we all know the delay costs money. So for gang up layout, we see three common issues. One, gang up layout is already imposed on a sheet size selected by the designer. And number two, a business card design is laid out on a larger sheet size with trim and crop marks. And number three, the design requires precise front and back registration that demands perfect trimming. Here's an example of a business card order that's already pre-imposed. Because your customer's designer is probably not familiar with your digital print produ production, the design is not likely um, optimized for the sheet size you have available at the print shop. And this layout may not fit within the imageable area of the printer, since different models of printers at your print shop um, probably have different imageable areas. So, the truth is that the, the designer doesn't need to have any knowledge on what sheet size you will produce his job on and what digital press should be used. The designer simply needs to have the imposition, um, uh, leave the imposition out of her design so that you can achieve the optimal imposition layout using a make ready application that is well integrated with your digital press and offline cutting workflow. Here's an example of the second common issue. The design is positioned on a larger sheet, or in other words, the media box is larger than the design size. This PDF also contains uh, trim marks. In order to correct this file and get ready for production, it's going to require time and higher level expertise available at your print shop. And that's additional cost for production that you're going to you're, you're going to probably pass it on to your customer. So what are the settings the designer should review and change at design time? Here's a snapshot of incorrect settings a designer used when creating a new InDesign document. So the designer has used a system default letter as the page size. And with this default, margin is set to 0.5. Uh, inch for the non-imageable area and uh, zero inch for the bleed. The correct setting for the business card design is to use the business card page size already available in InDesign and modify if necessary and then leave no margins 
also put in uh, 0.1 to 5 inch for the bleed area. The designer will also need to leave out all the trim marks when creating PDF from Adobe InDesign so that marks can be placed based on the imposition sheet size at pre-press time. We will cover the mark settings in the next challenge. Here's an example of correct business card design where the media box is the same as the trim box. To verify the size in Adobe Acrobat, you can mouse over to the bottom of the sheet in the lower right hand corner to see the design size. The third common issue that uh, we see here um, is registration is off. On the back of the business card, the logo is partially trimmed and there is white space showing. This issue comes up when registration in the design doesn't account for the front and back tolerance of the engine. For example, if an engine has, say, plus or minus 0.5 uh, millimeter tolerance on front um, and the back, the business card's front and back registration can be up to one millimeter off. To overcome the registration issue, there are two tips you can share with the designers. One, build the tolerance into the design. The elements critical to the design should not be placed too close to the edge. And number two, incorporate lead into the original document to avoid unintended white space. So this is a good example. So with the right amount of lead and good amount of uh, uh, good placement of the logo, there is no white space showing and the logo is printed correctly. Well, coming back to the business card order animation, let's look at how applications like Fiery and Pose can make this job preparation a breeze. The designer works on what she does best for content design and leave the paper size settings, in position, or mark settings to the operator. This is where the operator can even create a template to automate future business card orders. Operator finishes the order very quickly without any rework and a customer is satisfied with the experience. To summarize, have your designers do less work. This may be counterintuitive, but as we see in, in, this, in this challenge, you can deliver a job much faster if the pre-press work is left to you at the print shop. So the checklist for your customers are, don't pre-impose a design time, leave out the marks in PDF creation, educate your customer to design a layout document with the final document size with lead and trim included. Finally, get PDF files. Book of design is our next challenge. Common issues we see here are, uh, first, booklet design includes spread in the PDF. Number two, booklet design has fold, trim, and crop marks. And number three, booklet contains unnecessary blank pages. Once upon a time, we need files for books in reader spreads to prove and a printer spreads to print. Many designers and publishers are still in the habit of doing this, even though the process can be tedious and confusing and doesn't offer any benefit in digital print workflow. The good news is designers don't need to do this anymore. InPosition software can read pages, design in a single page format, and lay them out correctly. You can also add the proper gutter and spacing to pages based on chosen binding type. The reader spread files, on the other hand, take time to deconstruct, so designers can save time if they send you just page, uh, pages in order from the start. Here are the settings in Adobe InDesign you can share with the designers on how to output print-ready PDFs for books and booklets. Turn off spreads and turn on pages.
second common issue for booklets uh, is that designers include print marks in the PDF files, um, as we also saw um, in the last challenge. Well, designers are used to turn these on for tr traditional press workflow. And similar to business card production, sheet size and imposition layout are decided at print shop, so marks can be placed based on the sheet size when the imposition is created at pre-press time. So let's look at the correct settings. The designers will need to ensure all these boxes are unchecked when creating PDFs using Adobe InDesign. Our third issue is around blank pages. That of stitch booklet is quite popular as it can be easily produced with inline finishers at digital press. However, if a booklet is not designed with a finishing option in mind, we often see unnecessary blank pages that ruin the attractiveness of the finished piece. And this is a video that illustrates a booklet design with unnecessary blank pages printed at the end of the document before the back cover page. To help eliminate unexpected blank pages at the end of the, uh, the booklet, status stitch booklets should have a page count that is divisible by four. That is four, eight, 12, 16, and so on. So designers should have a page number in mind at design time and use um, available page count to optimize their set of stitch booklets. This way the designer can place the last page on the back without adding any additional blank pages. And as we see here, this is a, a good example that's the optimi optimum design that has um, all the blank pages removed. So to summarize, in our booklet challenge, we recommend designers to turn off spreads, do not include marks, avoid unnecessary blank pages in saddle stitch booklet design, and finally, get good um, get PDF files. So before we go on, let me check in with you, Judd. How relevant do you find that the these first three challenges um, are to your operation? Well, Ling, that's, that's kind of interesting that you cover the last couple items you just did, imposition, final document size, and bleeds. Um, just last month, we dedicated our monthly blog post to the same subject, which was, please don't impose your books. Please make your documents to their original size, plus add bleed. When these things get done on a consistent basis with our customers, it really increases the throughput of uh, our prep department. That's great to hear. So um, you already are seeing positive business returns from getting good PDF files um, from your customers. And by the way, I really like your uh, blog concept. I think having this type of blog can not only showcase your expertise and keep your customers engaged, but it's also is a great uh, resource for communicating best practices to your customers. So let me carry on to the next challenge. Um, I certainly hope, Judd, that we can perhaps offer some more fresh ideas for your future blog. In my finishing is our number four challenge for PDF design. And you may ask, why just inline finishing? What about offline finishers? Well, offline finishers offer um, really manual adjustment, while inline finisher can be dialed in um, to accommodate the design. Therefore, we are just focusing on the inline finishing today. The so three common issues we see with inline finishing are, one, document margin is too close for the inline trimmer. Number two, design does not consider inline finishing. And number three, design does not consider media weight. Here's an example where the document margin is too close for the inline trimmer. So the content is cut off after finishing. Designers really need to account for the trimming when laying out the, the, uh, the content. And in this, in this example, with proper margin uh, built in between content and trim box uh, in the PDF, um, you know, looks a lot better. And because the trim box value is based on the inline trimming values, the design is produced correctly after trimming. 
And we recommend that you share your inline trimmer specifications with your customers so the designer can design the trim box based on the correct trimming value. The second common issue occurs when design doesn't consider inline finishing. Designers in this case have applied margin uniformly to all pages in a duplex document. So the front and back pages have the same registration. Uh, but when hole punch is applied, the front page is fine, um, but the back page has content clipped off by the finishing. This type of issue also is seen with other finishing, like spiral binding as shown here, and certainly ring binding and stables as well. Hole punch with duplex documents require margin adjustments on front and back uh, sides. Uh, left on the front side and right on the back side. In this example, uh, finishings are outside the content and the design has enough margin for finishing. And same good design principle is applied to the spiral bound booklet. Our third issue comes from media weight. Media weight place constraints on the number of sheets that can be finished. As the media weight increases, fewer sheets can be finished. For example, on a particular engine, 20 sheets can be folded for 80 GSM stock, but only uh, 15 sheets can be folded with, um, say, 105 GSM stock. And you can certainly try to trick the engine by loading a heavier media while telling the engine the weight is lighter. But this is a bad practice because this may compromise the color quality of the output and also cause paper jam. And this type of practice can um, certainly add to the delays of the job and incur additional service charge. Booklets should be designed with the finishing characteristics of the digi digital press. Each engine and finisher will have its own specifications and they, are, uh, they should be available in the user guide. So we recommend that you provide a guide for your customers based on these specifications. Um, for example, on like how many folds can be delivered by your finisher. So designers can take media weight and finishing into the design considerations. Here's our checklist for the inline finishing challenge. Leave enough margin for finishing and consider media weight and finisher constraints at design time. Our last challenge is on printing tabs. The three common issues are, number one, tab text is positioned incorrectly, number two, poor image design for tabs, and number three, improper design of bleed edge tabs. Tab jobs can be pretty complex, as they are really custom orders. Without the right tools, building a tab job can be quite time consuming. You can spend even more time preparing or fixing a tab job if the tab texts are designed as part of the source document. In this example, only part of the tab text uh, made it onto the tab here when PDF is printed using a tab stock. Because tab stocks are selected at operation time, and because each digital printer may handle tab insertion differently, you want to use um, a digital pre-press application like Fiery Job Master to determine the correct placement of tabs in a, in a job. This application should be well integrated with your digital press and has knowledge of the digital press capabilities on tab insertion. So in this example, the tab text is left out of the original PDF, and the page is converted to a tab page using Fiery Job Master, and then, still using Fiery Job Master, texts are placed onto the tab year. This ensures the printed keys have the tab text properly laid out and meet your customer's expectations. To take the tab creation to the next level with applications like Fiery Job Master, you 
You can put also images on the tab years in addition to text. The correct sizing of, of an image uh, is even harder to manipulate on a source document. So the second issue for tab printing is poor image design for tabs. The example here shows a tab image being too small for the tab year. Here's another poor image choice where the image is um, just in low resolution, resulting in fuzzy output. Using a prepress application like Sari Jotmaster, you can shrink or expand the size of an image. The designer needs to make sure that the image is large enough um, so you don't lose out on the quality when the image is stretched. So as a rule of, uh, rule of thumb, the image sh shouldn't have to be magnified over 150% to fit the tab year. We recommend that your customer provide the image file separately in high resolution and correctly sized based on the tab cut um, uh, they want to use and let the digital prepress application fit it properly with the tab text at prepress time. And using a high resolution image, you can stretch the image in place on the tab year using Sari Job Master without compromising the image quality. Our last tab printing issue covers bleedage tab. Fire Drop Master has introduced the ability to create bleedage tab jobs for digital printing, and it can be prepared easily at prepress time. One thing to keep in mind is that document needs to have a large enough margin to accommodate the bleedage tab without overlapping document content. Even though you can use Drop Master to ship the content, but it does mean additional prepress time. And your customers can avoid this cost by designing in the margin for bleed-edge tab before sending the job to you. And here's an example where bleed-edge tab has um, overlaid the content. In this example, proper amount of margin is built in for the tab, and the tab was placed too close to the inline trimmer, so part of the tab is trimmed off. In this good, exam, a good design example, tab is inside the trim box, which is set with the trimmer's values. So for bleed edge tab design, we recommend to have half an inch margin in the design to accommodate the one-fourth trim on the outside edge of the booklet. The checklist for our final challenge include have, a, have tab text in separate document as part of the print order, and at prepress time, use an inline uh, in rip application, such as FireDraw Master, to create tabs. And then get high resolution images for tabs. And finally, allow proper margin when, when designing bleed edge tab booklets. Well, I want to thank the audience for staying with me on these five challenges. We have gone through quite a bit of content here. So let me summarize them in terms of key takeaways. Number one, use this webinar as a reference to educate your customers on why good designs can save money. And number two, remind designers to keep media and finishing choices in mind when designing booklets. And number three, share our booklet from this webinar with designers so that you can get print-ready PDF files. And number four, don't forget to leverage in rip tools to overcome file issues when they do occur. Well, Judd, um, what do you think? Did our webinar give you more tools um, and practical solutions to improve Make Ready in your operation? Ling, I think it was right on. Um, you know, we don't do much tab printing, so the last challenge kind of went over my head. But tabs are something I really should consider producing at some point. Um, I feel, though, you hit on some really good points, that, and it just sounds like what we're lecturing or talking to our clients all the time about. Um, I'd really like to put a link to some of this on my website. You know, I kind of feel like we go over the same old things with people and designers, and then a whole new crop of designers come out, and we have to go over it all, we have to go over it all again. Mm, excellent. Well, you're certainly welcome to share this webinar and the checklist, all the checklists with your customers. 
Um, actually, we hope that all our audience can take advantage of, of, of this uh, webinar and a checklist and use them as useful reference points uh, for future customer engagements. Well, because good practices really make good business. Uh, before I wrap up, I would like to invite everyone on this webinar to our next webinar. webinar and it's called uh, Take, Do Take Document Layout to the Next Level. It's scheduled two weeks from today on September 25th. We understand that problems do come up, um, you know, like Judd says, um, in the customer files from time to time, despite all the do's and don'ts that you share with your customers on PDF file design. And you will find this next webinar really relevant to your operation because we will show you how to perform certain corrections and late stage edits uh, to PDF files, uh, for example, color correction, without having to go back to your customers. And when you have print ready PDF files, what are the tools and applications you can leverage to produce jobs efficiently and automate for future jobs? So I hope I will see you again at our next webinar on September 25th. OK, well, let me hand over the presentation back to Veronica so she can walk you through the, all the great resources and exclusive training offers for today's webinar. Yes, thanks, Ling. Uh, so as promised in the agenda, here we have these great free resources so you can improve make ready efficiency right away. So first, we have uh, this checklist. Uh, for print ready files. You can share this handy tool with your customers, post it in your website or in your blog. So if uh, uh, your customers or you use this checklist for prepared digital print, um, digital files for print productions, you will get a PDF file that will get the output you want faster. Second uh, resource is this uh, white paper about configuring color settings at the diary for optimal print output. And this explains how to do so for specific color workflows. We are also sharing the PDF distiller settings we recommend to use when exporting a native document into a PDF format to make sure that image conversion, color compression, and color correction are the ones we recommend during this webinar. We are also um, sharing a link uh, to the previous webinar, Best Practices for Preparing uh, Files. We, uh, in this webinar, we also share the ABCs of Design for Digital Printing Guide. Um, Link referred to these ABCs guides before in the challenge number one, and we recommend that to you and your customers. And then we give you access to uh, the user forum, so you can get in touch with other FIRE users, get guidance from them, and from FIRE experts at EFI. As a reminder, Everyone who registered today has access to these three online courses in an e-learning bundle specific for Make Ready. The courses are booklet making and imposition, printing business cards, and printing calendars. We are giving you the username and password in this slide, so you can take notes, but don't worry. In our upcoming thank you email, we will uh, uh, be giving you these uh, access credentials as well. And in the next webinar, we'll be giving away a new e-learning bundle, and this time including advanced imposition and job master overview. So there's another uh, reason to register for the next upcoming webinar. And as Link said, we're taking document layout to the next level on September 25th. And uh, we definitely look forward to see you there again. Also, that's not all. If you want to capitalize the knowledge and experience acquired with a formal certification, we have another exclusive offer to everyone who attends these two webinars. We'll give you a 10% discount or $25 off of the FIRE professional certification. So make sure you're registered for the second uh, session again. Uh, the details on how to redeem this coupon will be delivered after the second webinar. We also have a FIRE resources webpage that would uh, make it easy for all of you FIRE users to find all the great educational resources, downloads, and support documents all in one location. Uh, you can access this by going to resources.efi.com slash EFI. 
There are other free EFI webinars for you to join, and these are about other product divisions for uh, products such as Monarch, iQuote, Smart Design Analytics, uh, Radius, and OPS. Okay, we are now ready to take questions from the audience. Please post your questions by using the chat window, and we review them and answer them in a first come, first serve basis. Okay. All right, great. So we have some questions coming in, but as Veronica mentioned, it's not too late to uh, send in yours. Um, we'll start with the first. Uh, um, we'll let Ling and, and Veronica take a look at the questions that have come in. Um, as they do that, I want to reiterate um, what both Ling and Veronica said. We do encourage you to take the checklist and, and the other resources we're going to make available to you and post those on your website or as um, Judd mentioned, if you have a blog, um, that might be a great thing for both you and your um, clients um, to have access to. Um, so uh, please, if you have any questions um, about that or unsure need any assistance, let us know. Um, you'll get all the information within a few days in a thank you email. So with that, let's uh, tackle the first question. Well, actually, the first question I see here is how to download this PowerPoint. Yep. So um, again, the, with the recording and a copy of the presentation will be available to you. We'll, we'll make that um, part of the whole package of resources we're adding um, to uh, the thank you email. We'll have a whole landing page with all of that. And uh, if you, for some reason, don't have something that you saw, heard of, um, get back to us and uh, we'll get you what you need. All right? So? Okay. Um, next question I see here is, what is the recommended bleed setting for business cards? Um, well, generally, business cards um, that need bleed um, you know, should have a 1 8 inch or 3 millimeter bleed on all four sides. I um, think the next question here, where can I get the recommended Adobe Acrobat distiller settings? Um, I think the, so that's a setting that we have available um, uh, and it can be downloaded from EFI.com. Uh, we're going to detail that uh, link location, I think, in the, in the thank you letter. Yes. Yeah, if, if you want to know it right now, you go to EFI.com to the support pages as, as if you were going to download uh, drivers in the download center, in the EFI download center. Right. You go to the applications tab and uh, look for the, the stealer settings in that uh, list of okay. applications to download. Okay. But we'll give you the right instructions in the thank you email. And then um, next one is, can I share the Adobe Acrobat distiller settings with our customers? Yes, definitely. Um, you can directly just point them to the download side um, at EFI.com. Um, uh, next one, again, is about distiller setting. What version of uh, Adobe Acrobat uh, will these distiller settings uh, work with? Well, um, the, the distiller setting will work with Adobe Acrobat uh, version 5 through the latest um, version, which I think is uh, version 11. Um, I think the, I also see a question related to, let me see, uh, to, uh, it, it may not be uh, this one over here, so about the, uh, I think it's number, number, yeah, um, I think the this customer has uh, purchased Fari and Pose, and uh, when when uh, when upgrade happened to the Mac version OS 10.9, the Acrobat and Pistop will not install or they just don't work um, anymore. So that's a good question because um, you know we. We also, um, so just to clarify, our Fire and Pose, Compose, and Jam Master ship um, will, will kind of provide a copy of uh, Adobe Acrobat and in Focus Pistop as part of the uh, these options. And um, uh, when the, uh, I think we were shipping Pistop version, uh, I'm trying to remember, 11. 
And uh, when Mac OS version 10.9 came out, um, the uh, um, you know in focus informed us that uh, that version 11 does not work with the uh, the Mac uh, OS version 10.9. So consequently, InFocus has released a new version, the InFocus Desktop 12, and we are now making uh, making this version available to the Fiery Impose, Compose, and Job Master customers as a free upgrade. Uh, we we are working to make this um, uh, this upgrade available at efi.com uh, at the download center. And we should have that uh, available uh, sometime this month. So uh, stay tuned. We hope to kind of uh, communicate that through our outbound um, kind of newsletters um, and, and also webinars. So I will certainly provide an update in the next webinar. So thank you for that question. There's a question number 12 says, is there a way to remove customer provided crop marks? without going to the design application. Uh, yes, there is a way. Um, if, if you have a pit stop, you can go to the PDF file and remove those crop marks. Um, so that, that's the only way I see without going back to the native document. Um, I think the, I say, down, 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 go down. Sorry, we're looking at a list. I think the question here is, um, can Compose or Job Master not adjust the front and back margin for hole punch rather than making the designer set those margins? Um, so I think there's definitely, I think the recommendation from this webinar is um, designers should set those margins correctly at design time. And, you know, Job Master um, or Compose don't just just automatically set those margins for you. Uh, with Fire Job Master, you, you do have the capability of going and adjust the margins if the uh, the document wasn't designed with the correct margins in place already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a question: Can some issues be corrected by an operator? Well, that's a great question and, and is an answer that we will be providing in session two. In session two, we will be presenting you all the tools that could be included in the, at the RIP, so the operator has the power to apply uh, to first identify issues and troubleshoot them and correct them and print and have the desired output. So join us in the next uh, session. Um, let's see, does it come with, oh, Fire Impose. Um, so Fire Impose, um, the question here is, um, is Fire Impose sold with Fire Compose and Job Master or sold separately? Um, Fire Impose um, and Compose and Job Master, uh, we do offer them as separate applications. Um, I think we, we have, the, there are uh, instances we have uh, kind of packaged uh, the two together, like Fiery Impose with Fiery Job Master, Fiery Impose with Fiery Compose. So, uh, you know, all those uh, purchase options are available. We actually have them, you know, we certainly have them uh, sold through our, our channels, and uh, you probably also find them um, at our e-store, efi.com. Um, What's the next question? Uh, is there a is there a way to add full marks in Fiery and Pose? Yes, yes. Um, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we don't really have time to kind of cover. Um, anything specific about Fiery Impose, Compose, or Job Master, and but we do hope that in the next webinar on September 25th, we're going to go into some product-specific recommendations and tips and tricks, and uh, and have an opportunity to show you what the app how applications work and help you um, uh, kind of efficiently produce jobs at, at operation time. Uh, Oh, let's see. How can I include in, in, uh, in, 
install the distiller settings onto my system. Um, I think in the in the follow-up email after this webinar that we, we're going to include instructions on how to install uh, the the distiller settings we recommend, which is Safari Optimize 2 settings, uh, using the uh, Acrobat distiller as well as you know, how to install it uh, using Adobe InDesign. Um, I think are there recommended Adobe Acrobat distiller settings to use when you, when creating PDF files? I think we'll also create a link to uh, kind of, uh, uh, I think we already have a document uh, titled Fiery Distiller X. Um, that's 10 settings that, that can be used with uh, um, Adobe Acrobat 10, uh, version 10 and, and 11. Um, you one more. Okay. Uh, we're just about at the top of the hour, and we want to respect everybody's time. So let's get one more. And again, as we mentioned um, at the beginning, if you had questions and we didn't have time to get to them, uh, we will apologize, um, and uh, we will do um, everything we can to get back to you soon. And we'll do that um, via direct email, um, so that if there's further um, questions after we provide the initial answer, we can have that sort of conversation and, and really get you um, the information you need. So, um, do we have? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Question here is: How can I tell if my Fiery server supports bleed edge tabs? Um, well, the, the in order to create bleed edge tabs, um, you're going to need the uh, the Fiery Job Master um, option, and you can. Certainly, find this as uh, you know when you select the job in the whole queue and right click on it, uh, you're going to see the Fire Job Master option. Um, but the, the Fire Job Master option is available for Fiery servers uh, running the Fiery system 10 or higher. And um, to kind of figure out what system version you have for your Fiery server, you can go to the uh, device center in Fiery Command Workstation. And check what version of uh, yeah. of fire you're running. Uh, you're all, you also can go to efi.com slash fiery job master. That's the web page of fiery job master where we have uh, the list of supported printers for fiery job master. So if you want to check uh, if your printer is listed there, again go to efi.com slash fiery job master. Thank you, Ryan. So. That was a full hour. Um, we do look forward to seeing everyone in a couple weeks. We'll uh, go a little bit deeper into um, the tools, uh, the InRes tools that you can use that are available at your disposal um, to do some of the great things uh, that we're all dying to find out about. So with that, thank you to our um, presenters, Veronica, Ling, and Judd, our special guest um, today. And to our audience, thank you for joining us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in, in the next one.